All right, so I want to go over, the, uh, pick up this little part right here in the notes. So it's going to be quick and short. So I did talk a little bit about this uh, when I showed you how to do buffers, but officially. So a buffer is um, when you have a weak acid or base and it's conjugate. Now, sometimes called a common ion, where you know that F minus was the common ion in that HF problem that we did yes, uh, that I just did the video for. Um, in other words, a weak acid base pair. Both of the examples above are buffer solutions. Why does it say above? They're below. I must have moved this around. So this is the conjugate base of the weak acid CH3COH. This is the conjugate base from the weak acid HCOOH. So which of the following are buffer solutions? We're looking for, so this is a strong acid, so that's not a buffer solution. It can't be a strong acid. This is a weak acid. And that's what's left over when you remove an H plus. So that's a weak acid and it's conjugate base. So yep, that one's a buffer. We know that this one's a weak base and this would be what is formed when you add an H plus. And so yeah, that one also, we have a weak base and it's conjugate. Weak acid and it's conjugate. Weak acid, right, the F minus is the conjugate. Yeah, so yeah, sometimes you'll see um, a spectator ion in there and it's usually sodium, lithium or potassium example of that again but the problem here is this is a strong acid so that is not a buffer solution once again spectator ions get rid of the sodiums and you have co3 minus 2 and you have hco3 so how does hco3 become co3 minus 2 it loses a hydrogen and so this is a weak acid now it's two more o's than h's but it's a second ionization of h2co3 so weak acid, it would have a Ka1, where the first ionization occurs, and then you have HCO3 minus left. Well, this one can act as an acid or a base because it can accept the hydrogen and go back to HCO3, or it could lose a hydrogen and give us the example of letter G here, where it loses a hydrogen, it becomes CO3 minus two. So yeah, that is a buffer solution. Get rid of the spectators. All right, now what about a buffering capacity then? Because we said we can add a strong acid and a strong base to this, and we don't get much of a change in pH that you would normally get when you add a strong acid or a strong base. So the capacity of a buffer is defined as its ability to react with an acid or a base, as I showed you the reaction. The higher the concentrations, the more acid or base it can absorb. You just have more moles. If you have more moles, because it is a stoichiometry problem, you are doing a chemical reaction not equilibrium in this case. And so more moles means you have a higher capacity to add more acids or bases. Using the relationship between the pH, the pH that you want um, in that range where it works, and the pKa, so the negative log of the Ka, allows us to make both qualitative and quantitative assessments. For example, proteins are large organic molecules that are important in the biochemistry of the body. A protein side, has an NH2, which can either be protonated, meaning it can add a proton and become NH3 plus, that movable hydrogen called labile. When we compare the pH to the pKa to determine which species is predominant at a certain pH, we have to use the ratio of the components. So, I'll talk some more about that. It's the ratio of going back to the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, if you remember, we had a ratio here where we were taking the log. This is really the key to understanding that. This is the ratio they're talking about. Is the ratio of base to acid greater than one, meaning you have more base than you do acid, or is it less than one, in which case you have more acid than you do base, and there even our cases where it's equal to one. All right, so there is an effective range of a pH. In other words, I mean a buffer. A buffer will only work within a certain range of pHs. If it gets too low, below the pH, then it doesn't work anymore. If it gets too high, again, it doesn't work anymore. And it comes back to these reactions. Remember, it, the uh, acid reacts with the base, the base reacts with an acid. So here's our example. So we have HCHO2, which is really HCOOH. Um, this is the acid, so weak acid. And then get rid of that. There's the negative. There's the conjugate base from that weak acid. If you take the negative log of the Ka, negative log 
of the Ka for HCHO2, you get 3.74. What that means is the effective range. Now, really, I didn't make up this worksheet, and I don't know why they got rid of the last number different, because really it's a pH range, one higher and one lower. So 3.74 is the ideal range, but you can go all the way down to a pH of 2.74, so take away one, or up to 4.74. Now that says five, but again, it, it really, this should say four, or this should say one. I don't know why that teacher would change that. So you're adding a pH plus or minus one going in either direction. So that's the effective uh, buffer capacity. That's what they refer to that as. And, you know, these are the ones that are in our body. We have both of these in our body. We have a buffer system in our blood to, uh, with carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide and water, which remember is H2CO3, there's that weak acid, and there's its conjugate base. If you take the negative log of the Ka of H2CO3, you get 6.37. So that means um, our blood can handle addition of acid or base. Think about your exercising, the lactic acid builds up, uh, your body has to flush it. If it added a whole bunch of acid to your blood, the pH would drop very rapidly and it would be really detrimental to your body but it's a buffer. It's a buffer because you have the HCO3 minus. So this is the acid and this is the base. If you add an acid to this, it reacts with HCO3 minus. If you add a base, it reacts with HCO3. And the effective range is plus or minus one. So like I said, I would change those to be the same. So 6.37 up to 7.37 or down to 5.37. So plus or minus one. All right, so I did this in the other video, but I'll do it again. So um, I got rid of part of this problem. So we used to have to talk about what happens to the pH, um, not just up or down or which one it reacts with, but um, actually calculating it. We don't have to do that anymore. All right, so we have a buffer system containing CH3COOH and um, CH3 COO minus. So Na there would be the spectator ion, take away an Na plus. So this is the weak base and this is its conjugate, I'm sorry, weak acid and it's weak acid and its conjugate base. So when we add HCl to this, which one is it going to react with? Well, it reacts with the base. So the reaction is, and it acts as an acid, HCl is an acid, which means it's going to donate its hydrogen. Oh, like that, this is negative. So the hydrogen comes over there and you get CH3COOH and you get Cl minus. So there's the reaction. So some of this goes down, but again, not very much. Not gonna affect the pH much because it's not really affecting this much. What about if we had a base? So we have to react that with the acid. So CH3COOH, double replacement. Now really you can look at it as getting rid of the spectator ion, which I'll show you. But if you look at it as a double replacement, CH3, COO, and A. Remember, it's that hydrogen at the end that you lose. We've been doing all along. And we get uh, HOH or H2O. Sodium would be a spectator ion, though. So sodium is a spectator ion. So if they asked for the net ionic reaction, you would have to get rid of that spectator. All right. Any questions on that? Send me a message. Uh, let me see what I have next. I think that was it, though. I have another reaction. I might as well do it. All right, so now we have um, a buffer between NH3 and NH4 plus. So our spectator this time is the chloride ion. So the reaction is NH3 plus water. This time it's a base. We have a KB. It's a buffer solution with the weak base. You get the conjugate acid. And you get hydroxide. So the chemical reaction when you add HCl, we're going to add that to the base. So NH3 plus HCl. Now this is a special one in that it's a synthesis. So you just kind of have to memorize that one. Or you look at it as just that getting it, donating its hydrogen. And then you get NH4 plus and you get Cl minus. You could look at it that way too, because that's actually what would happen. Um, and then if we added NaOH now, we need to react that with the acid NH3. So what are we going to get here? Well, we actually get or NH4 plus, sorry, not NH3. Sorry, I'm a bit distracted. Um, so we have NH4 plus, so NH4OH 
or again, you can have them separated. Um, and then NA. So again, there's our spectator. So if we get rid of the spectator, you can see what it almost looks like a synthesis again. So a little bit of a special one there. All right. I think on the next page, we we'll go to the next. I mean, I've, I've given you a, a worksheet to try uh, for homework. So again, let me know if you need anything. <laughs>